Viewers, for the second time in two days, the Prime Minister has targeted the Congress over prioritising interests of Kuala That the Congress Party's manifesto is a divisive document that makes the Minister has suggested at the hustings that the Congress's policy document was inspired by the same mindset that drove the Muslim League of Jinnah to split India. Listen in to the Prime Minister. Congress ne जो घोषणा पत्र बनाया है उसमें भी मुस्लिम लीग की छाप है साथियों कांग्रेस को आज भी नहीं है ये भाजपा सरकार है Hit back hard at the Prime Minister, accusing him of playing the religion card to divert from real issues that confront the country Ramesh of the Congress. According to the BJP and the Prime Minister, your manifesto is speaking the language of the Muslim League. The Prime Minister Bharati Jansen was in league with the Muslim League. He was part of a coalition government in Bengal in the early 1940s with the Muslim League. The Hindu Mahatma. Of Shama Prasad Mukherjee, the Jansen in the Northwest Frontier. It was Mr. L. T. Advani and Mr. Jaswant Singh, leaders of the BJP, who went to Pakistan and eulogized the leader of the Muslim League, the member of the Congress Party, which was in bed with the Muslim League. It was the, Bar the founder of the Bharati Jansa. He wants to replace this Constitution of India, of which the pillars are one of the pillars is secularism, the other pillar is social justice. There are other pillars. Of Singing of a new constitution. No, as a political party, anyone can set a target, right? I'm not talking about the real reason for the. While Jairam Ramesh is right that the Hindu Mahasabha, led at that time by V. Savarkar, and of course uh, Mr. Mukherjee, supported the Muslim League governments in provinces like Bengal and Sindh, he's not placing the entire context for why this was done. The facts are that the Hindu Mahasabha shared power with the Muslim League in tune with Savarkar's policy of quote, responsive cooperation of Sadhya Anukul Sahakarya. Earlier, Lokmanya Tilak had espoused the same policy. Would the Congress accuse Lokmanya Tilak of being a rump end of the Muslim League? It was Savarkar's policy to occupy governmental posts to safeguard Hindu interests. The soundness of this policy was proven in provinces like Bengal and Sindh. For instance, when the Muslim League Ministry in Sindh passed a resolution in favour of the formation of Pakistan, the lone dissenting voice was that of the Hindu Mahasabha minister. Importantly, the so-called nationalist Muslim, Allah Baks, who was a Congress member, abstained when this resolution was introduced in the Sindh Assembly. Aside from these hard facts, there is also the matter, viewers, and let me very quickly apprise you of this. The interim government of India was formed by Jawaharlal Nehru as its leader. It was the only cabinet in India's history where the Congress and the Muslim League shared power. The interim government had autonomy and remained in power until the end of the British Raj. Aside, as I said, from these hard facts, there are some similarities between the Congress Manifesto and the Muslim League's pre-independence resolutions, at least when it comes to one aspect of social justice. The Congress Manifesto says, and you can see it on your screens, viewers, we will encourage reform of personal laws with consent of concerned communities. Now, the Muslim League resolution was quite hope of said community. The Congress manifesto says, ensure minorities without discrimination. The Muslim League resolution says, all legislatures shall be constituted on principle of effective representation of minorities. Congress manifesto says, we will uphold fundamental right to practice faith and rights guaranteed to religious minorities. The Muslim Re Resolution says Constitution must protect and promote Muslim culture and due share in aid given by the state. The Congress in the meantime has approached the Election Commission seeking action against the Prime Minister for vitiating the communal peace. But the BJP says that it has persuasive arguments to defend its stand. And let's have a look at how the BJP intends, if it comes to that, to defend its stand.
on the point that the Congress will ensure that every citizen, minorities, have the freedom of choice of dress, food, language and personal laws. The BJP's take is, or its defense is, that the Congress will not support the UCC and continue with binary laws that differentiate between citizens which, according to the BJP, is divisive. On the point of the fact that the Congress will restore the Molana Azad scholarships for studying abroad and increase the number of scholarships, the BJP's take, putative take, will be that positive discrimination on religious lines in education or in any other field goes against the basic ethos of a secular constitution. On the point that the Congress will ensure that banks will provide institutional credit to minorities without discrimination, the BJP's putative take will be that bank credit for activities has been communalized, which once again undermines the secular spirit of the Constitution. On the point that the Congress will ensure that the minorities receive their fair share of opportunities in education, healthcare, public employment, public works, contracts, skill development, sports and cultural activities without discrimination, the BJP's putative defense or take will be that a tacit promise to provide quotas along religious lines has already been struck down by the Supreme Court. Now viewers, the debate is set and the question of course is whether the BJP can validate the Muslim manifesto Bab, whether this actually springs from an attempt to change the discourse or is it actually a divisive proposition by the Congress that they need to actually answer for or explain why in a secular polity religion is being once again invoked as a policy tool to secure advancement and welfare from the government. Now viewers, let's open this up because this is an important debate. Political parties go to voters and they're judged on the basis of such documents. And we are told that in a few days, the BJP itself will also come up with their own manifesto. So there has to be a level playing field and therefore the BJP also will have to explain whether it is playing a divisive role here by invoking or focusing selectively on this one aspect of what has been thought to be quite a bold and liberal policy document. So, viewers, let's begin. Let me, let me first begin with uh, Dr. Ranganathan and Sanjay Jha to set this up. Tom Vadakkan will come in next and then Dr. Suman C. Raman. So, uh, Dr. Ranganathan, how do you see the Prime Minister's attacks on the Congress's manifesto? Is there really a basis? Or let me put it this way. Can the BJP validate in your eyes this Muslim manifesto, Bab? Uh, good evening, good evening to my fellow panelists. I will either have a divided in destroyed India, had screamed Jinnah. While he managed the former, the Congress is intent upon managing the latter. Because Rahul, appeasement doesn't encourage welfare. Appeasement encourages warfare. The Congress has a chance to show that its manifesto doesn't reflect that of the Muslim League and proving it is against appeasement by saying that it is for the Uniform Civil Code and will not allow Muslim personal laws to run riot by saying that it will ban middle-aged Muslims from marrying children, by saying that its government will control mosques as it does Hindu temples, by saying that it will obey the Supreme Court judgment, by saying that it will abrogate the Waqf Act that is blatantly discriminatory, by saying that it will abrogate the conjunction of RTE with the 93rd Amendment that allows Muslim schools to escape keeping reservations for the economically weaker sections, by saying that it will abrogate the Hajj subsidy, by saying that it will not celebrate the Hindu mass murderer Tipu's Jayanti, that it will not allow roads and towns to be named after genocide, or that it will stop state sanctioned and funded madrasas. If it isn't going to do any of these, then how is it so any difference said that while the Congress is openly appeasing Muslims, why does the BJP not abrogate all those acts that allow for such appeasement? Why has the BJP not taken control of the mosque as it has of temples? Why has the BJP excluded certain communities from the UC, thus allowing not overturn the overturning of the Shabano judgment? Why has the BJP not renamed Babar Road, not renamed Bhaktiarpur? Why has the BJP not... Finally, Rahul, just one second. On the biggest accusation that Modi is anti-minority, well, here is the heart. And 
Even with government jobs, three crore scholarships, seventy percent girls' school dropout rate, five crore scholarships, free UPSC coaching, thirty percent girls' school dropout rate. In fact, Modi has given scholarships to more Muslims than Manmohan Singh did. Has Modi reduced AMU funding? No. In fact, he has increased it, including a ninety crore topping up. While our Muslim population is fourteen percent, as many as thirty one point three percent of homes under Awas Yojana, thirty three percent of funds under Kisan Samman Nidhi, thirty six percent beneficiaries under Mudra Yojana have been Muslims. Pradhan Mantri Shadi Shagun scheme exclusively for. Muslims girls who complete their graduation before marriage, they will get fifty-one thousand rupees. Housing, skilling, scholarships, government jobs. No other prime minister in living memory has comparatively done more for Muslims than Modi. But the truth is, everyone is in the game of appeasement. While some do it openly, others do it quietly. Okay, Sanjay Jha, yeah. I think that we've already sort of laid out what the BJP will say in its defence. What do you think the Congress needs to say in its defence? It can't. Sorry to say, can't sort of. Get away by suggesting that oh power was shared between, you know, uh, a putative sort of uh, Muslim League government uh, at one time and the Hindu Mahasabha because we know the reasons why that was done and to sort of without context suggest that would be very unfair to the historic record. Also, of course, it's not as if the Congress uh, did not share power with the Muslim League itself. So I think that's really not the answer to this, is it? What about tree can't be the answer? You you need to come up with something a little more, perhaps substantive, to uh, tonight, of course, uh, uh, set aside the prime minister's barb. Uh, Rahul, give me an equal amount of time like you gave to the previous sure. panelist, and no interruptions, please. Yeah. Let me start. Not waste any time. When I first heard the Prime Minister talk about the Muslim League, I realized how intellectually uh, a serious deficit that exists in the BJP, led by their Prime, uh, you know, uh, Prima Donna himself. Muslim League has he read the Congress manifesto? Has Prime Minister Modi comprehended what is written there? I mean, is giving farmers and MSP a Muslim League conspiracy? Is increasing Manrega wage and promising a national minimum wage of 400 a Muslim League, uh, you know, kind of a heist? Is giving youth rupees one lakh stipend as a right to apprenticeship a Muslim League plot? Is giving women 50% reservation and one lakh in their bank accounts every year a Muslim League story? The truth is Narendra Modi and the BJP are rattled, and I'll tell you why. It's an outstanding document. And I can list out the number of other things in it, but I have addressed the four principal issues. You remember Rahul Narendra Modi's famous quote: "Mere paas to ek hi jaat hai, kisan, yuva, garib aur mahila." The Congress has addressed all four batting on the front foot. Okay, that's point number one. That's why the reaction to try and somehow take away the merits of a Congress manifesto. And try and embroil it in the typical communal polarization story, where Narendra Modi has been a master since Gujarat 2002 riots. Now let me address your second point. Since the previous panelist waxed eloquent on what has been done for the Muslims by this government, let me remind him and your viewers that Bilkis Banu, gang raped in the 2002 Gujarat riots, had the humiliation of actually seeing her rapists being released. On India's 75th anniversary celebration of the Independence Day, with the complete conni connivance of the central government and the Gujarat government, I think we should all—all all of us are men on this program. We should all collectively hang our heads in shame as to what do we do to our women in our country. Point number two, you know, yes, the previous panelists tonight—we have done a lot for the Muslims. There have been so much of lynching in this country <coughs> that it reminds many people of the Ku Klux Klan. It's a disgusting reality you can't run away from. The Nupur Sharma issue actually put India into a crisis, a diplomatic crisis, because of the insult of the Prophet, where the Islamic countries were going to boycott us diplomatically. Till the government went on its bent knees and said, "You know, please forgive it." Last but not the least, amongst hundreds, open call for genocide of Muslims happening in religious congregations. Now, your fundamental point: Why? Why would the Congress say what it does in the manifesto? And Rahul, I really appreciate your allowing for a very Free willing conversation. I will take only thirty seconds. In my opinion, a civilized society looks after its minorities. You know, all these NRI diaspora that goes Modi, Modi, Modi every time he goes to Houston and New York. 
are minorities in their country. They like to be respected in America. Then, by the same logic, Mr. Modi should realize that respecting minorities, okay. protecting them, is your duty. No, I'm just taking two more points. The Congress manifesto, by the way, and if anybody says appeasement, I'll tell you why they're lying. Look at the data. Look at the data on jobs, employment, in judiciary, in police, in administrative services, education. Muslims are not well off. Look okay. at the Sachar Committee report before you make those allegations. Okay. And lastly, the Congress on the UCC. What has the Congress said? Minorities. It's not just talked to Muslims. Right. And it said you need to consult. <coughs> Isn't that, by the way, the key hypothesis of the okay. Uniform Civil Code? Let by me the Constitution. tell you. Let me tell you, For viewers. Uh, the reason why the Prime Minister is touched, and I think I, I will get uh, Dr. Ranganathan back into it because a lot of the points that have been made by Sanjay Jha have been made by against the arguments that Dr. Ranganathan made. So I will bring him back in uh, before I bring in the other two gentlemen. Now, viewers. There is a very important word in the preamble, and it is secularism. So our republic is founded on the basis of it being secular. And if the manifesto itself warps the definition, the constitutionally laid down de definition of one of the important pillars, cornerstones, then it, there is a problem. And that's why the BJP's lead campaigner has focused on that. It's not for me to defend the BJP. I'm only simply putting it out there so that viewers understand. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, farmers, MSP, etc. are not cornerstones of the constitution. They could become results of an impetus that is captured in our uh, constitution. Uh, very importantly, I think Sanjay Jha talked about Bilkis Bano in the state of Muslim women, etc. Now, viewers, if you continue this pernicious tranche of personal laws, you know who gets the most affected? It is Muslim women and extending that logic also to minority women because they are minorities within minorities, the Muslim women and minority women from other minority communities. And of course, we talk about Sartan Se Juda, etc., etc., but we conveniently forget that that is also ultra virus of the constitution. Yes, you have a problem with uh, lynchings, but then you have to talk about the lynchings that come in the pretext of a certain supremacism. Again, that is religiously founded. And we talk about the release of Bilkis Banu, but we forget conveniently about Rajiv killers, etc., etc., who are given all sorts of accolades, etc when they are out of jail. Nonetheless, Dr. Ranganathan, I think some points have been made by Sanjay Jha. You need to come in and defend your position on that. No, I, I don't think uh, my position needs defending because none of the points that I made were rebutted. Sanjay made, my good friend made additional points, which I respect because in their isolation, they are right. But the point is they are hopelessly selective because more Hindus, Dalits and non-Dalits have been lynched by Muslims than Muslims by Hindus. It's a fact, documented fact. And you rightly said, for the atrocious event of Ms. Bilkis Bano to have transpired, there are other events that have transpired that have, for example, the Rajiv Gandhi killers were, uh, killer was released, the Coimbatore bombers were released, and the pretext of the release was that we do so much for the Muslims. That was the pretext of releasing them. What can be more appeasing than that? So I'm not here to cast aspersions on what the previous panelists said. Just one question, because I want to quote here what the previous panelists said. Bobatim, he said, the manifesto of Congress talked about giving one lakh to women. I want to ask him, has he, because he's an ex-banker, does he know how much is it going to cost this promise to the national exchequer? Does he have the amount? Can it give yeah, the amount have, right yeah. now? Yeah, yeah. What is the I, know, I have an answer for that. I have an answer for that. You, you know the why the answer is so easy? Mr. Modi's government Even has that grown in the last five years. Just hear me out, Anand. In the last Please, five I'm years, a corporate, a corporate tax relief of over around 8 lakh crore rupees to the corporate sector when they didn't need it. But then obviously they wanted to charm them for, as we discovered, maybe things like electoral bonds. That 8 lakh can more than take care of all the funding. 14 lakh NPA write-off 
take care of a lot of stuff. If you remove electoral bonds and the extortion and the crony capitalism, India is rich in assets. We can redistribute a lot of money. Most important, redistribution of wealth, viewers, which will give taxable revenue. There's that's no why, problem. That's there is no Robert problem. Badra is joining question. the BJP. <laughs> a contesting maybe from a meeting, but that I think is a very clever ruse there because I think uh, Rahul Gandhi is just waiting for the election in Wayanad to complete and then he will announce his candidature from Amethi. Uh, but that's a different story altogether. Let me just bring in Dr. Raman and uh, Tom Vadakkan. Tom Vadakkan, look, uh, this is a very serious debate and the Prime Minister is being accused of focusing on the thin edge of the wedge to once again sort of communalize a manifesto and the election proper, etc, etc. How do you respond to this charge? It's being made and Dr. Raman is hearing you because he'll want to rebut. Well, Rahul, what Sanjay Jha missed, he's a dear friend of mine, but you know, he is such a blindfolded supporter of the Congress, though in suspended animation. But he's a dear friend. So I... I, oh, I forgot you guys were seen. for very long the fact, uh, compatriots. Yes, sorry. Go ahead. Yes. The Shariat compli uh, compliant manifesto is the issue. Now, it reflects the dreams and the visions of Jinnah. And we underwent that huge tragedy of partition. My friend, it's all okay to say that Congress is pro-minority. I'm a minority. And there are various other minority community, uh, minorities in this country. But this specific love for Muslims has a lot to do with the current reality. The current reality is the crown prince is contesting from a seat which is, I wouldn't call it Shariat compliant, but yes, a huge followers are there. So this is essentially motivated and reasoned out primarily to target that target audience. You understand what a target audience is. You are a, a person who has been in, uh, in this business. Hmm. And that is the USP that the Congress is trying to do. And the reality is when they do this kind of an exercise, what happens is the open the do they open the doors for criticism and now this whole business of triple talaq there is hint in your manifesto which says that it's going to be reworked there is also hint of ch child marriage your opposition to ucc is a standard uh, line and why because again this community is your word bank and these are the realities that are happening there. And I need to tell you, there's also this whole business of, in your manifesto, wearing of non-essential religious clothing, that is hijab, in educational institutions under the grab of right of freedom of religion. I'm a Christian. I have a lot of practices in the church. Tomorrow I go to an institute or my son goes to an institute and say, I would like to dress up like what I do in church. Is that acceptable? There is a uniform, which is a school uniform or a college uniform. And that gives equality to students. And that brings up an atmosphere of coexistence. Okay. But when you try and do this kind of operation, what happens, Sanjay, is you are already dividing the young mind. Okay. Now, a quick response. Hi, one, one second. Let, let me get in Dr. Raman first, and then we'll have a second round of uh, rebuttals. Sure. Okay. Dr. Raman, uh, I think substantially the BJP is saying that, look, secularism has been pretty much shredded. Um, Rahul, um, first of all, it is very unfortunate to see that we are back to the um, era of, you know, going and communalizing the election seat. Now, first of all, there is no need. This should have been an election.
which should have been fought on the record of the last 10 years and nothing else. Instead, we are back to what uh, Jinnah said or what Muslim League did and what happened in 1936, 1943, 1941. It is a very, very sad state of, of affairs. Why can't the BJP say, look, this election is based on what our track record is over the last 10 years. Now go there and if you feel that the track record is good enough, vote for us and, and, and be done with it. And at the end of the day, this is what many of us knew was going to happen. We were going to go back to the attempt to polarize the electorate, to raise the bogey of the of of uh, of the Muslim uh, Hindu Katre Mehe in various forms. Now, what form it comes in uh, in each election, it varies. But eventually, the subliminal message, and in fact, it is no longer even a subliminal message. It's a very open message. And after having been in power for ten years. What is the necessity to again go back to this kind of a, uh, of a campaign? It is very unfortunate. And uh, the Congress manifesto, the Nyay Patra, is something that is fundamentally, you know, I would say radical in many ways, but it has, it has struck a chord. I don't agree with all the things in the manifesto. And I, I have also said in many, many uh, uh, fora that there should have been something which appealed which made it more catchy to all segments of society but clearly to the poorer sections of india those who are facing the burden of inequity this uh, manifesto is something that is likely to appeal and in that case if that manifesto is, uh, is likely to appeal i don't see how a hindu muslim rhetoric is going to derail that appeal okay. at least not in several states of the state. Okay. Yes, the Northern Belt is pretty much a done deal. But beyond that, I don't see how Hindu Muslim is actually going to help the BJP. No, but let me more. ask you a counter but question, doctor. Let me yeah. ask you a counter question. Uh, you know, the Prime Minister does make it a point to list his government's achievements in speech after speech. I think you might have heard his speeches. Yes. He goes into an exhaustive sort of length of all the welfare schemes and how it is sort of benefited X number of crore people, this, that, the other. So he does definitely talk about that. But it also doesn't mean that the Congress manifesto is going to get a free pass on uh, what could be an attempt to appease, to undermine the secular fabric of this country. I mean, it's the Congress that where talks is, the most. Well, one is, second, well, let me, doctor, let right. me just finish my question. Yeah. Isn't it yeah. the Congress that gets really that. worked up? One second. Is it really the Congress that gets worked up whenever anyone says that, you know, I think two words have had their day and they should be removed from the preamble. One is secularism and the other is socialism. Constitution yeah. are living, breathing documents. So it's not as if, you know, they are Im completely immutable. So I'm just asking you, if they are so concerned about secularism, then their vision document should be inclusive. Here, there are large-scale concern areas. The Supreme Court, for example, has talked about the perniciousness of promising welfare schemes on the basis of religion. You know it's ultra-virus. So why is it no, being no. done? Tom Badakkan says to win a seat. I, no, no. First of all, let me tell you something very significant that Rahul Gandhi actually said two days ago. And he said as soon, the, the very night on which the manifesto was released, he actually made a statement. He said... We welcome your feedback. If you like it, tell us. If you don't like it, tell us what you don't like about it. Which I thought was absolutely splendid. Because the fact that so much of effort has gone into preparing this document, so much of consultation Please answer my question, sir. does not make... No, no, no. But my point is, if there is anything that is ultra virus of the constitution, Obviously, the matter will go to court. And oh, the obviously, will take but, care but, of it. but the problem is so the, the people who get. Okay, Dr. Ranganathan is raising his hand. Respond no, no, to my, Sanjay Jha. My, my point is, is, is that reservation for that women a problem? That is can't be, sir. For, Tomorrow of, I can say. A problem? But Dr. Is Raman, giving poor families below the poverty line one lakh a year a problem? Imprisoning women problem in give? patriarchy no, no. is a problem, whether they are minority or they are majority. Uh, dividing people on the basis don't of religion, promising... Them? No, no, don't one second. No, 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 they, no, I'm sorry. By giving, I, by I giving sorry. a lack to Raman, poor family. No, no, money, money, money will not even reach them. That will be taken How immediately. You know no, 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 let me finish, Dr. Raman. You didn't listen to me again. 
Okay, go ahead. What I'm saying is they land, it land in their bank account, they'll be asked to hand over that cash. That's the nature of patriarchy. Women here are used, sir, don't forget, by politicians I don't think when so they go to jail to keep their Rahul. seat hot. That Rahul, is a, that is the kind of symbolism that has gone into... Part of India. No, 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 please, sir. There women, is... Women, look, look, look. look. Women make Dr. Dr. Raman, Dr. Raman, Dr. let's not be, let's not be so blithe. Let's not be so blithe about the way males, especially... No, no, males have treated women... From you know, they're Things changing too changed. slowly, and they need to yes, change in a manner. No, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. They shouldn't be waiting around for the next 20 years and a two-thirds majority from the minority community so that they can do X or Y for themselves. I don't think that works. And we have seen it doesn't. The Congress education, lost election after election female, because of Shah Bano. And we know that. Female education empowers yes. them. Yeah. And southern India yes. has yes. got a significantly right. larger number of educated right. female population. I, I am sure, And sir. therefore, sure. this whole argument sure. that the males will snatch yes. away all next this time, money. Next time, will, next time. Time you have hoodlums, uh, you know, uh, going out there and uh, attacking women for being in a pub, etc., etc. We'll have that debate with you, sir. One minute, you Dr. Ranganathan. Who's doing that? Dr. Rang it doesn't matter, sir. Everyone does it. Let's not make this communal, also, please. I'm not making yes, it. Yes, Dr. Ranganathan. Yeah, so, Dr. Stock, so Mantraman, I've been hearing you very patiently. You made some great points. Please listen. Three points, very briefly. Number one. Dr. Raman said a lot of effort has gone into making the 2024 Congress manifesto. He's right. But then again, a lot of effort went into making the 2019 Congress manifesto as well. That promised abrogation of APMC. I want to ask, why is that missing from 2024 manifesto? Does Congress no longer want to abrogate APMC and go back on its promise? Number two. When Dr. Raman says, you know, we are, why are we vitiating with Hindu Muslim? Why not be talking of development? This is but fraction of, as you correctly said, Rahul, what the Prime Minister talks about, in fact, not even 1%, the rest, 99% of him and his people, party colleagues are talking about the amazing developments that have happened in the last 10 years. Finally, why should we or anybody else be scared about talking about, and why should we talk about that when Nupur, you know, just mentions a few scriptures, the whole army descends upon the streets out to behead her. Is that not an issue? Is that not an issue? For the, example, why did the BJP Raman, dump please her? Don't interrupt. Please why did not. the BJP let her down? Is that what I am talking about? Is that what I am talking about? I was the one who criticized the BJP most for it. Not what we are talking. We are saying that should be an issue. Okay. Any discrimination, any appeasement okay, belonging to yeah. religion because... Also in America, which sort of ascribes itself as the mother of all democracy, there is a black and white fault line there. There is a rich and poor fault line there. There is, mm -hmm. unfortunately, even a Christian and Muslim fault line and a Jew and a Muslim fault line in those mm -hmm. societies. Those issues are discussed openly. Even foreign mm -hmm. policy becomes a part of the domestic discourse. So why should we tuck away this little bit about secularism being warped in, uh, in, 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 you know, in, in a sort of a insidious way undermined? Well, let me tell you, Rahul, I, I agree with you. Yeah. Let's talk yeah. about politics in a more transparent fashion. Yeah. Right. Yes. So here is my here is my question. Hmm. Mr. Modi, even before the first round of voting has happened, has brought up Ram Navmi, has brought up Ram Temple, has mentioned Muslim League. It tells you that there is a serious panic within a party okay. that should have been going to town saying we have. I done think you know the context in which area. those those anyway, remarks let, are made. Anyhow, Ra, 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 Rahul, let me finish. I just yeah. won't take too long. Yeah. My second point mm. is this: that in if you look at the Muslim population in this country, I'm not even including the other minorities, by the way. Mm. If you include the entire minorities, we are around 300 million people right. uh, in this country who actually need, I think, you know, to be given protection and anything to make it a level playing field for them. The Muslim population in this country is the second highest after Indonesia. Hmm. OK, and are, is the Modi government actually trying to say that to basically talk about protecting whatever, you know, they're extremely socially disadvantaged or economically disempowered status right. today and giving them an opportunity <coughs> to get a level playing field is playing politics is right. vote bank. Well, is that, well, can, well, the Supreme the Court that is imbued with wisdom that's pouring out of every crevice according to religion, the basis of any policy, even the CA, the Chief Justice of India's son, 
has a problem with on the fact that it discriminates supposedly allegedly on the basis of religion so hang on hang on one second one second one second therefore if you want to civilize society then get out of the muslim trap get out of the minority appeasement trap get out of get out of get out of get out no get out of undermining secularism in the manner it should be practiced in a modern society Yes, very quickly, Dr. Ranganatha, I need to move on. Very significant. No, Rahul, the Hindu great, community great point, is very Rahul, secure and confident. Point. Let me Sanjay, tell you that. Sanjay, Mr. Please, Modi can try and paint it otherwise. Yeah. Okay. Sanjay, yeah. Rah- Rah- Rahul, I'll tell you where this virtue signaling and saying minorities must be taken care of, protected leads to. It leads to the Congress bringing on what it called the communal violence bill. Wherever, whatever happened, the perpetrator would have been taken as the Hindu majority. I want to ask Sanjay, who was then not suspended, did he, was he or was he not a votary of the communal violence bill where only the Hindus will be held guilty? Anand, Anand, just okay. to give you an example, just to give an example, there are many states, Jammu and Kashmir is a, is a perfect example before you, where the Hindus are not in a majority. So please, for and God's sake, stop guilty. using it as a religious that's example. That's precisely why they were, that's precisely why... <laughs> That's precisely that why, why uh, Sanjay Jha. Not brought in. Yes, no, no, he, that he was precisely to, why also he, they he were kicked out. Keto. Anyhow, I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to get into that, viewers. If the Congress was so concerned about minorities, how is it that Hindus are not given minority status in the Northeast, where it had governments for years altogether, or even Kashmir? Viewers, think about these things. I, I don't want to belabor the point too much. I think we're getting the drift of this particular debate. One important cornerstone of our constitution is secularism. And I think you would agree that people have a right to question if a particular is undermining it. It's like the Congress and all its liberal sort of ecosystem leaps to always point out when the BJP steps on that live wire, which is called secularism. And why not, viewers? Why it should be... And when the tables turn, it shouldn't whinge and whine.